So we are live. Jody, I'm so excited to have you. Hey, Stein, there you are. You're making dinner. Stein is in Denmark. You can't see my chat, say eh? That's kind of why I wanted you to go on live over on your channel. But anyways, Stein is uh, one of my regulars. First of all, I want to introduce Jody. So Jody, I just saw her. She popped up, popped up on my YouTube feed the other day. I clicked on her right away and I thought she could be my friend. So I reached out to Jody. I think some of you know already that uh, from watching me that I'm wanting to do more of these. And Jody came up with a great name called Beauty Talk. And I love that idea. I just want to get on here and and learn what is good for other people's skin and and whether like Jody, I just found out that Jody has more of a combination skin where I have more of a normal to dry skin kind of combination lately. But what works for me may not work for you and what works for Jody may not work for you. And we're just going to kind of mix it up and do our faces and talk about what we like. So and you guys are welcome to chat in the comments. I'm going to keep an eye on the comments section. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will try to ask Jody or I will answer as best we can. And also I do have an opportunity of putting your chat on so Jody can see it. So I can ask her directly through your chat. So, all right, let's get going. How long have you been on YouTube? Oh, such a good because first of all, thank you so much for letting me do this with you. And I know you said we just met a couple days ago, but you guys, you know, when you meet somebody, and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't care where you live. Like we're now friends. We're like friends forever. Yeah. Julie is so like that. So if you watch her channel, you guys are so lucky to have had her. I just started YouTube in June of 2021. Um, after a long corporate career in corporate stuffy America, I just thought, you know what? I, this is not, I'm tired of somebody telling me how I have to wear my hair and how I have to wear dark suits. And I'm, I just wasn't me anymore. So I said, let me do what I really want to do and help busy and ambitious women figure out the best stuff in makeup while they still keep their busy life going. And it's been a blast and I have learned so much and probably like you two, you learn every day because this whole world of virtual everything is you have to learn camera and lighting and sound and that was never my thing. So um, my thing was makeup and I love makeup. So this is yeah. right up my alley. I actually saw an interview with, I don't know if you watch Lisa, Lisa D, D1, I think. Yeah, she's so nice. And um, I don't know her, but she was on an interview with Marnie, another um, YouTuber on here. And they've been on there for a long time. And they were talking about how, you know, from a from an outsider looking in, it could look so fun and look so, oh, I'd love to be a YouTuber. And of course, we love what we do. But at the same time, there's so, like, we are makeup artist, hairstyle, well, I'm a hairstylist, um, lighting, editor, uh, you know, tech, everything, the whole marketing, the whole thing. So it, it is a lot of work, but it sure is a lot of fun. It, I, I saw one day um, somebody say, you should never retire because your brain always needs to keep learning. Well, this is one of those things that we just keep learning. There's so much more to do, right? So right, right. Yeah, and it's fun because now it's new challenges and it's it's new things that you have to learn all the time. And to your point, yeah, you you think you learned a lot through your life, and then you jump into a career that's so different. And yeah. from the outside, yeah, it looks like this influencer life is that people just send you free product all the time, and you just get to go on these glamorous trips and. You guys, I'm here to tell you that is not true. It's not true. It's not true. No, I think no. I've been sent like hardly anything. And that's okay because I don't want to feel pressure to say this is the best makeup brush ever. Yeah. I really want to buy it myself so I can say this is this is not good or it is or whatever the answer is. So I Are you, you already put primer on? I already put a little primer on and I use the um Guerlain. This is the L O R. It's one with the little tiny gold flakes in it. It's yeah. You can buy this at Costco, by the way. Oh, I don't know about Canada, but in the U.S., you can get this at Costco for about $10 less than you can get it at most drugstores, just FYI. I used to sell that one. It's, it's like Guerlain is a, a, a high-end, very luxe brand. It's beautiful. I know Tati Westbrook used to love that one a lot. I'm it. using this one. I don't know if you can that? see that. This is by Freck Beauty. Oh, and okay. I've used it before. It's so funny. Watch Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a sticky, sticky primer, but it must not go on that way. No, and it doesn't, but it actually is so nice. I'm not sure that you would like it because 
Well, it, it's hydrating. I wouldn't say that it's oily at all, but it definitely feels hydrating. Do you have any dryness on your skin? I do. I am really dry under the eyes. That's a dry area for me. And then on the cheeks. So I'm more T-zone oily and it's a whiter T-zone as I've gotten older, but definitely dry on the cheeks all through here and right. Okay. My mouth. You might like it then because I just, I feel like it just feels like a really beautiful moisturizer and I really like it. I, I actually saw Babs Beauty on here. She used it. And I thought, first of all, I just wanted to try it because of the texture. I thought that was so cool. But I like it so much that I've been using it regularly. And it's just, it's more of a, um, I don't find that it's, no, it's not sticky. See? Yeah. So it dries down sticky. and really gets absorbed to the skin. Yeah. It's just a unique kind of funny. It made for a really good thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know. I don't know what day, we'll have to, One of these days we'll have to do one on your skincare because I've had enough conversations with you now prepping for this without makeup on that your skin minus any products is beautiful. It's just so glowing. So I definitely want to do one of these about all your skincare. Skincare. Well, I've had some treatments too. Now, what are you using? Wait a second. I am using. You don't want to miss a beat. Yeah, I do under sculpting. That's how I prefer to do my makeup. So I do all my crazy creams being my contour, my highlight, my um, concealer, cream blush, everything first. And then I veil it with my foundation. So okay. right now I'm using the NARS. And doesn't that look so dark? Yeah, yours looks really nice. That's the one I should have gotten. Uh, mine is Laguna number three, which is the dark, uh, darkest of the Lagunas that they have. Okay, yeah. See this one here? It's, well... It's pretty. It's just really, really, really subtle. So anyone, if anyone's watching that you're lighter, this one's a really pretty one. Um, yeah, you can't even see that on my skin. So I absolutely got the wrong color. So I should have done what you did. Well, I just have a receding hairline. And you know, as women that have, of a certain age, things start to look different and do different things. And somehow my forehead just decided to take on a life of its own and keep getting bigger. Um, <laughs> And so I am just going to keep shading it and moving it forward so it doesn't look as large. So that's why I use such a dark one. And it looks crazy in the beginning, but once we blend this, you won't even see it. Okay, and well, I what am I going to do? I had Radio Frequency Morpheus 8 the other day, and she did it right here. I don't, can you see the redness still? Not very much, but I loved that video that you just posted about that experience and what that treatment was like. That was really helpful to see. So great video. It, Thank you. The best treatment for, for tightening of the skin, especially on the neck. It was a yeah. huge difference be before and after. Um, this time it's interesting because I stayed red a lot longer. So I don't know if she... I also... With treatments like that, you really have to make sure to not use the actives beforehand. And I may have used, a re oh, there's that damn fly. Um, I may have used a bit of retinol before. I don't think so, though. I don't, oh. Anyway, I'm staying red there a lot. It's not bad. It doesn't hurt at all. And it, I can cover it. But to me, that means it's really going to work. Now that I've got my dark, dark contouring on, I'm going to go in and do what what's called an ombre concealer because... I am losing a ton of collagen, aka volume, in my face as I age. And I lose it a lot through here. You can see I just like my head sort of indents. And then I've got these great cheekbones, which I'm grateful for, but they are more pronounced the older I get. So I like to make sure that I have a lot of brightening, almost a white concealer, right? Yes. Yeah, so you're bringing that out. Yeah, just to pull that out a little bit and make my make my cheekbones look a little less pronounced. And then what I'll do is I'll take what's left on my contour and go right on the edge of my cheekbones to try to pull those down. Mm -hmm. which is so counterproductive to what I did like 20 years ago. I'm like, no, I must have high cheekbones. Yeah. And now well, I must try to not have such high cheekbones. <laughs> that's so interesting. And that's a really good point because we always see people on the internet and like I'm on TikTok a lot. I don't know if you if you got on there already, but um, everybody is telling you the rules. Oh, you've got to do this. You've got to put it here. You've got to put it here. So your face is a different shape. You do have high, high cheekbones. So you wouldn't want a contour to make your cheekbones higher. 
No, I would look skeletal. Maybe if I was doing a Halloween trick or treat, maybe I would, but yeah, normal day to day. No. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I switched it up completely. I'm using Shiseido uh, skin radiant lifting foundation. Oh, that's a beautiful one. It's so pretty. And I'm going to get my hair out of my face. I just highlighted my hair last night and my son helped me pull my hair through the cap. <laughs> Gosh, how nice is that then when you're a hairdresser to be able to yeah. get your hair? If I was to try to color my own hair, um, first of all, I would spend a lot more at my hairdressers undoing what I had done. <laughs> yeah. And second of all, the color thing, it just, I don't know why that whole color wheel level two, level 10, super confusing. I just can't quite figure that out. So yeah, I'm glad there's professionals like you out there to fix it for us. Yeah. And my hair is really easy. It's an easier because it's light already. So it's not like, you know, you have a bit of a darker root, so you would run into more trouble if you did run into trouble where for me, I don't, I'm, I'm putting light in with light. So it's, even if I make a mistake, it's really not that visible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid there. I'm going to like Ronald McDonald or something. <laughs> yeah. You would pull a lot more warm for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I would never want to put hairstylists out of business that that's my field. So you know, no, I think it's just great. I just thank goodness that there are good hairstyles out there, ha hairstylists out there that can just give us all a little bit of just tips and techniques to help us in between our times to be able to get to our stylist. Um, Stein just said, yes, it's great to know that there are options than the big plastic operations. Absolutely. Yes. I'm hoping that I never have to do that. I, I'm hoping that if I can keep up and nobody ever has to anyways, like maybe right. I'll just be so okay with myself that I'll just say whatever, love me, you know, like, but, well, but one of the things, Julie, I don't know how you felt about this, but that's one of the things I love about YouTube. And especially for those of us that have channels that are over 50 is we get on the internet and show what we look out with look like without makeup. And I love that because I think it's good. The more we do that, the more it normalizes. This is what 50 year old skin looks like. Yeah, that's it is what it is. And we love it. And every wrinkle is from smiles or experiences in life. And I mean, if people want to lift and nip and tuck more power to you, but I don't want I just don't want women to feel like you have to to be accepted by society. No, as that's you age, you know, Jody, when you model, did you model big or, or no, small? I started, I went to, um, this is gonna, this is a throwback to Barbizon beauty school way back in the day. And I started in San Diego and my, probably my biggest shoot was like some wedding photos and um, wedding venues. And th they had us in a private plane, which was really cool to sh cause they were trying to show what you could spend if you wanted to spend on this wedding, this whole package that you could get. So it was really more things like that. Um, Very cool. I was, I grew up in Montana. And then when I left Montana and was on, um, into corporate America, the 406, which is the area code for Montana. So there's a magazine called 406. So they put me on the cover of that, which was really fun to do a photo shoot for that. So it was that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, but not, 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 not big, big stuff. So, um, but I was a model and um, I was a model for Therma Spa. I had to sit in, um, I, I was behind the scenes mostly when I, when I lived in New York, as a makeup artist and hairstylist, but then sometimes I would go out on calls on uh, go sees and stuff. So I got hired for, I didn't know, I knew it was with thermos spa, but I didn't really know that I was going to be in a bathing suit. And so I got there and the makeup artist, I'm like, do you have any body makeup? Cause my legs were like white as a ghost. I had no idea. And I had to get in a pool in the third, in the hot tub, but they hadn't had time to heat it. So it was like 50 degrees Oh it no. Was so cold. It was so like, cold. Oh, this is awesome. Oh yeah, and it was that's exactly. This is not glamorous at all. It was <laughs> awesome. But and then I was a uh, I I got the back of my head shot for an IBM commercial. Nice. <laughs> he just got the back of me. And I got uh there was another one it was for an arts and crafts magazine. One of my girlfriends from high school, she lives down in um in Southern California now. And she was one of the swimsuit girls in Baywatch, not one of the main characters, but one of the um, extras. Oh so yeah. Thought, well, you're the most famous person we know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that show son of a beach? It was a spinoff of Baywatch. Oh really? No, I don't think I saw it. 
Anyways, yeah. I, did a, I did a movie with her. She was a beautiful girl. It, it was like a thriller kind of movie. It wasn't anything like that. Oh, by the way, everybody sees me use this all the time. It is a Bobby Brown uh, bronzer, and this is in medium. And I always show that I use the medium because it really coordinates with my redness in my skin. Nice. Um, and what brush are you using? That's a nice fluffy brush. This, one, this is one of the new refer brushes that I got. So this is a number 22. So this is, I love BK Beauty brushes. They are vegan and I love being a professional makeup artist. I just love the natural hair bristles yeah. and this is made in Japan and every brush that's made in Japan is like, is top quality. But the price is that these are really good. Like usually if you went for a brush, um, I don't know if you've heard of Hakuhoto or yeah. uh, Sonia G, all those brushes, those they're really good. quite expensive and yeah you know, they're handmade and they're made in Japan. These are not that expensive. They're pricier for sure, but they're not really, really pricey. Yeah. So that's on your G pricey. No, that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. What are you doing now? I am going, I'm just using, I like to use a, la a flat Kabuka brush for my foundation. This is just the Sigma. I've had this one forever. It's a F90 or F80. You can tell I don't have my glass on. I'm like, um, that's a... <laughs> Uh, let me you hold it up to the camera. We'll tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is an F80 Sigma flat Kabuka brush. And so, I like to just put my foundation on with that because I'm not trying to move it around. I'm really just trying to sort of wash over yeah. all of those products that I just put on and just blend them all. And it just makes everything look like it was meant to be like the shadows were natural on my skin. Otherwise I get too crazy looking if I don't put the foundation over everything. Jackie's there. Oh, I, hi, I'm going Jackie. to introduce introduce you to Jackie. We call her Key because her sister calls her Key, and that's how I met her over on TikTok. Was Key okay? So now when I see her, I'm like, sounds weird me calling you Jackie because I've always called her Key. Okay, so this is, this is I Key. Call her Key. Hi, Jackie. Yeah, I call her Key. I love that. <laughs> uh, um, and Stein's welcoming. The new ones to the chat. She's so cute. Sorry. Hey, what time is it in Denmark then right now? First time. She's making dinner. What time is it, Stein? Nine nine hours ahead. Jackie, you're so cute. No, you're cute. I'm so glad you joined us, Jackie. Tell me uh what you think of this idea. I want to know. I want to know. I like this. Because don't you like I was telling you, Jody, I kind of get bored talking to myself after a while. It's nice. You know, we could get several makeup artists on here yeah just do a big round robin as if we were all a bunch of girlfriends getting ready for a night out or something i love we that could. we could all have a glass of wine and there you go it doesn't yeah. even matter never too old to get together with friends what part are you on now now that i have all of my cream stuff on i'm gonna go with my powders and i'm gonna go with a little bronzer i'm using the Too faced this is the one that's chocolate and it does have a little slight chocolate smell but it's just the right bronzer. It's not too dark. It's not too warm. I'm more neutral shade. So this one is one that I found. I found that for some reason, the Hula Benefit just started to look warmer and warmer. I don't know if they changed. Of course, I'm going to blame them. I think they changed the formula. Now, I don't know what it was, but over time, I'm like, why am I still wearing that one? Because I felt like I looked more Oompa Loompa-ish. I don't know yeah. why. So this one's a more neutral for any of you that are more neutral to cool tones. This is a nice bronzer that's not... It's not shimmery. It's a matte and it's just perfect. I think perfect. Are you using a Angie hot and flashy brush? This is yes. By BK beauty, that angled brush. It's at a a five Oh seven. Yeah. I think they taught it as a foundation brush, but again, you know, the thing I love is that there's no rules, which is why looking to so many different makeup artists is so valuable to me because, because there's no rules. You can pick up tips and tricks from everyone and, some are going to work and some aren't. That's right. I always, uh, Jody says hi, or Key says hi, by the way. Can yeah. you see that on there? I do. I'm trying to catch them. Key, if I can call you Key, then that's awesome. Thank you. I will. Um, who wants to know is that the, the lighter of the bronzer or the. Uh, this is the, this is the darker. Yes, this is the. Um, this is chocolate. I believe there's a, uh, there's a lighter chocolate and there's a darker chocolate. And this is chocolate. So I think I think there's three of these, actually. This might be the medium. I feel like there's a couple. Yeah, a few of them. Joe, yeah. 
Jody, so what color would you be in Mac? Like to give us an idea of, have you ever used a Mac foundation? Um, I did just buy that one that was the ink pin. Um, did you try that one that has that looks like a pin? It's really a cool foundation. It's a concealer foundation in one. It's a little thicker formula. And I don't know what color I wear in that. I use a lot of MAC lipsticks and I use a lot of MAC paint pots and a lot of MAC lip liners, but I would not, I'd be making it up if I just told you what that color was, but I can put it in the description box after we're done. Yeah. I just would love to know, um, like, okay, so for your hourglass foundation, what color are you in that again? Oh gosh. You're going to really put me on the spot, Julie. Um, I'd be making that <laughs> up and I would lie and my, all my foundations are in the other room. So I will put that down below too. Because the foundations that I reach for more often than not are my True Match Nude. When I want okay, to, what color are you in that? That is 01. Okay, so you're lighter. Yes, I'm definitely lighter. And then as we go into winter, I'll use that one a little bit more. Um, because I'll use heavy, heavy cream. And by the way, can you guys hear us okay? Just give us a thumbs up if you can hear us okay. I'm using my computer mic today because I I wasn't liking my other mic. Um, because interesting, you're lighter, but you're using a darker of the bronzer. And is that because of the tone then? It's because of the tone. I use that darker, the, the NARS, that contour I use is much darker. And yeah. that bronzer that I use is much darker. Because and it looks more like, like a cool tone then that's why is because otherwise stuff is just too warm for me. So yeah, here's my bronzer and here's my contour. Okay. Yeah. And I Have think you it's okay. You can get away with it a little darker. If you, if you under sculpt and put that foundation on over without it looking thick or anything. Yeah. So otherwise it doesn't show up. I think maybe for me with when I put my foundation over it, maybe that's why I go a little darker. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Because there's that fly. Did you see it? I saw it. I didn't see that fly. I didn't see that. <laughs> Guys, Stein, uh, Key, I have a fly locked in my room. I can see it. And it's just like, could this happen at the worst time? I can. <laughs> it's just flying. I'm, it's going to dive bomb me the whole time you watch. <laughs> I have to laugh. I have to laugh. It's real life. You know, that's when you go live. That's just life. That's what it is. So I saw you in your video the other day, you were using the technique that Wayne Goss used. And that was, was, was that to do a setting spray underneath your concealer? And would you continue to do that? Yes. You know what I did? In fact, I love that tip. The, the thing is with that, and I was very careful to say is that it did work and it continues to work. I've done it with the house labs concealer. I've done it with the Gucci concealer. I've done it with my elf concealer. Um, I tried it with the Natasha Denona concealer um, so it works with all different concealers from a variety of price points. The thing to be careful of is you use setting spray, two pumps on skin without anything. Then you pump your brush and put the concealer on. Then you press it in. Then you pump the brush with setting spray again. There's about six different times you spray it. So it's got to be a setting spray, in my opinion, that does not contain alcohol if you're dry under the eyes. Because, mm -hmm. you know, alcohol is, so, alcohol is so drying. So I love the technique. I just... I felt like it needed to go a little farther for women over 40 or 50 to just make sure that when you do that, that the setting spray is you're selective with that, not just grab one that right. has alcohol in it. Cause that could be super uncomfortable in a couple mm -hmm. hours. I saw, um, she's younger and she, but she's an artist, like a fine artist who does makeup videos. She's been doing makeup videos for years. And she, I think has worked with Pat McGrath. Her name is Alexandra Anel. She showed a video the other day where she did a very thin layer of her foundation and sprayed hers was the urban decay setting spray. She would let that sit, fan it off. And then she would do other thin, thin, thin layers. And her makeup stays all day and it's that same idea. And I think where some people go wrong and uh, and probably me too because I'm kind of heavy-handed just if I'm in a rush where we use too much makeup and her trick was the thin thin layers and then the setting spray in between and it stayed all day. Interesting. I never thought to put it under the eyes but it makes total sense. Mac has a um, alcohol-free one too by the way. Where is oh, that really? one? Let me see if I can find it, but they came out with one. Let me see. I'm holding the camera as if I can watch you put it, get it on your yeah. shelf. <laughs> I was 
I was with my client the other day because I'm doing the online as I as I mentioned, and my and my client Lisa, she was doing something, and I I I was going like this, like as if my position was going to help me see better. It was yeah. Had, now like, tell me more about that online. That sounds so interesting. What I I know a lot of my subscribers would love to know about this. That's the alcohol free. Okay, fix it. Stay One. over. Okay. Yeah. So. The whole idea is, is kind of like you and I, you and I have completely, I don't think we have completely different skin and completely different tastes, but again, what works for you may not work for me and so on. And I, I found over the years that I would watch like Tati Westbrook is one that I've been watching for years and years and other people that I would watch and I would get so excited and think, yeah, I need that. And then I would get it in my collection and it wouldn't work for me. I love YouTube and I love, obviously I love helping people and I like making money that that's, you know, we, we need that equal exchange. Right. But there's part of me that feels like I don't want to say something is good for somebody before I know them. I need to know them. Like I'm asking you questions just as we're sitting here and getting to know you and asking you questions is helping me understand, understand your skin better. It's helping me understand your taste. It's helping me like just the fact that you're using the products that you're using are telling me already what kind of textures you like, what kind of, what your skin type is. And if somebody's struggling, I could recommend something, but I really don't know. I, I don't know if you're going to use it. I don't know if it's going to sit in your drawer. I don't know if if I would recommend that to you. And I used to work at Sephora and at Mac and all, all Bobby Brown, all these places. And I would sometimes sit people down and I would think that something was going to work on them. And I would put it on them and go, oh, no, I don't like this. And I would take it off and start yeah. from scratch. So especially in today's day where inflation and you know finances are a little bit tighter with everything that's happened over the years, I, I would love to make sure that um, people have what they need. And of course, if you want to buy new stuff, if you want to go and buy a Pat McGrath or a Natasha Denona palette, absolutely, let's play. But part of it is making sure that you're getting the right suggestions. And the other thing is to teach you how to use it. Say you just have all this stuff sitting in front of you and you just have no idea what to do with it. That's what we do. We go through everything that you own and try to use what you have. And then if you need something else, then I make suggestions and you go from there and you don't have to buy it or you can buy it. It's, it's up to you. I love that idea. And so how do I like get on? Do I have, do I, can I find you? How do I get, do I reach out to you on YouTube or I built my own website and I just, it's exhausting. So I hired somebody and he actually was here on my chat. <laughs> I hired somebody to do my website for me. So right now, if you go there, it's going to say under construction, but it will be up where I've already had a few clients and they've been so kind that um, they're really helping me kind of structure. Like I've asked at the end, what would you like to see differently? What, how would you you know, any suggestions. So I'm, I'm altering it as I go because it's kind of a new business model. So when I say on my website, I, I said, okay, it's going to be this much for an hour. Well, an hour goes by and we need another hour. Like we're having so much fun and it just goes by so fast. There's so much more information that needs to be talked about. It's fun. That It sounds very one-on-one, -on -one, very, um, uniquely customized to that one person's individual skin tone, skin type shades, and then yeah. what I already have, which I love because I did a video one time on all of the makeup that I bought because of YouTubers. It was a little bit tongue in cheek because nobody makes you buy it, but I yeah. have a collection of thank you, Tati Westbrook products. Many <laughs> of them have been phenomenal, but there's a nice selection that I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've it, it doesn't didn't work for me the way it worked for that beauty YouTuber. So it sounds like what you're doing is amazing and so one on one and customized. I love that idea. I miss talking to people like I miss I, this is why this is so much fun for me. I miss that. I, I miss meeting women and helping women. And we're being asked, Sam, I am from Canada and Jody is from I am in Seattle right now. I have lived um, I'm from from Montana where I like grew up but I moved to Atlanta. I've lived in Georgia. I've lived in LA, Orange County for a number of years and then moved back up to Seattle. So that's where I'm at right now. And like I, close to BC? 
Close to Vancouver, yes. Um, yeah, not too far. Vancouver's like three hours for me. Okay. Yeah. So you have, the, uh, is it rainy there now? What's your temperature there now? Today, right now, it is sunny out, but it's about 55 degrees. Um, but a couple days ago, we were back in the high 70s. So I actually have a little fall candle going. I wanted to wear my sweater because I'm like, I need to feel like fall is in the air. I love this. So you're not hot flashing like I'm hot flashing then because I am in a tank top with a fan going. <laughs> you know, a knock on wood, I, I asked my mom about that as that time was approaching and she's like, honey, I never really experienced that. So I'm like, let's just hope that that's the way it works. And knock on wood, thank the good Lord. That's just never been something I've experienced. So um, yeah, I feel very, very fortunate because yeah. I've heard stories. I actually don't have it so much until I'm in the lights and the lights just kind of set me off a little bit. So what I did is I added a little bit of more, my lightest concealer, which is the, um, I use the Natasha Denona on the temples because I do sort of an ombre with my concealer and then the um, hourglass under here. Now, you don't need to go buy two concealers for that. I just happen to have got the wrong color in this one. Um, that's why I use it here. And then I use the lighter one underneath my eyes. So I haven't gotten that one and I wanna try it. Which one? The Natasha Denona. They're both good. Um, they're both good. I, I won't speak for them. I just did a Friday face off on my channel from last week and I put them in side by side, compared them, wore them for eight hours. And there was one of these that was a little better than the other. They performed closely enough together that you won't see a dramatic improvement one or the other. They're great. Right. Um, Sam, I'm 52 on Sunday. Oh, I'm a Libra. Happy birthday. Thanks. And oh I my God. 53. I turned 53 right around Mother's Day. In May, you're a Taurus. Yeah. Yes. My brother and my sister in law are Tauruses. Tauruses oh. have great sense of humor. <laughs> We're extremely right? loyal. Okay, Key, I'll see you in 20. My husband's three weeks older than I am, so I can always say, Oh, oh you're so old for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> And my husband is six months younger than I am. So I get reminded of that. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm not going to do my powder or anything until I use this. I think, uh, so Jody and I spoke a little bit beforehand and she's going to use this palette and I just got it. I've never used it before. So I'm going to use this palette. I'm so excited. It is, um, yeah. It's a good have you done a video on this one yet? I did. I did a complete look with this um, two weeks ago. Yeah. So I have one planned. I actually, uh, fingers crossed. So I screenshot Natasha Denona's videos of her looks that she created with this. Yeah. And I'm going to try to replicate it. Oh, I bet you can. Oh, I can't wait to see which one. Because she did a lot of, that's what I loved about how versatile this palette was. So I can't wait to see which one you do. I, I Well, I was going to be ambitious and do three. So I was going to do one on one eye, one on the other, and then finish with a final, final eye look. Yeah. But I mean, she's working on 20 year olds. So I think I'll probably have a really good laugh. <laughs> it will look great. It will but I'm going to be laughing at myself. It's okay. Yeah. That's a better mm -hmm. expectation anyway. So we know what really it's going to look like on yeah. skin. Um, so guys, cool. what colors should I do <laughs> now? Do you do your brows after your shadow or do you do your brows first? Um, I'm kind of a mix and match. Are I you? don't really have a, yeah, I kind of okay. don't have a, okay. I don't have a plan. I usually like to powder my brows before I do them because I'm very well moisturized, but because I don't know about the fallout of this, I'm going to powder after. So that's why I want to do my eyes first. Love that. But, uh, but it just depends. I'm like a little ADHD. Well, not a little, like quite a lot. So I'll have a plan, but it never stays. <laughs> it never sticks together. The most structured I was, was when I worked for Bobby Brown. We had to have a system. It was always you apply the concealer. And I love this. I'm going to teach you guys this. Yes, so your tip. Yeah. So it was always apply your concealer first, because once you apply your concealer and you brighten up underneath your eye, you'll find that you really don't need much else. It's this brightness here. And then you just put the foundation where you need it to be. 
In my case, it's different because I have a lot of hyperpigmentation in there. I have a lot going on. But if you don't have freckles and sunspots, really, you just put the foundation where you're where you're red. Because a lot of people, like, I don't know a whole lot of people you wouldn't need it out here necessarily, right? You don't have you don't have a lot of coverage um, necessities out here. Am I right, Jody? Right. Yeah. 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 So when you put your concealer on first, you'll see that automatically that's going to make you look really bright and alive and fresh. And then you'll see that oftentimes we just really need to put the foundation in the T zone. We're generally red in here. We're red around here where our pores are a little bit larger and we blow our nose. And at this age, most of us have broken capillaries around our nose. Um, and in through here, you know, but uh, you, you tend to use less foundation when you put your concealer on first. Do I stick to that? No, I, I don't. But when I worked for Bobby, I, I stuck with that and it was really cool. And it was for Bobby Brown. It was all about enhancing your natural beauty. It wasn't about trying to look like the models in the magazines. And, you know, that's her whole backstory is that she never could look like the magazine the beauties in the magazine. She was, you know, she's a dark haired, petite, five foot, you know, petite little lady. And, and so she just wanted to teach everybody to embrace their uniqueness, which I loved. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a great story. And I resonated with that very much because I don't think yeah. that anyone should change their look to look like anyone else. I think that everybody's beautiful the way they are. But. I totally agree. I absolutely agree. And I've spent so, enough time trying to, yeah. So what are you going to do? I'm going to go in with a little paint pot on my lids and then I will be right up there with you on the eye shadow. I think this, these colors seem to, oh no, they're kind of true. I think I'm going to go, I love cooler tones. Me too. That's why I love this palette. That's absolutely. And I get people are curious as to which palette, like if they could only buy one Natasha Denona palette. And I totally understand that. I pulled a couple of them just to really show the difference. Um, so you've got the, I need a nude, which you just showed the retro yeah. palette. I do like, it's just, Ooh. it's, it's, it's definitely cool, but it's cool to the, you know, more of those mauve -y. So if you really do like those pinks and peaches and mauves, that's a yeah. nice one too. The one I could have done without, um, I love the glam palette. I do use this one a lot. It's more my neutral. You know, I broke mine. Topes. I love it too. And there's so many that broke. I dropped it and it just oh, no. shattered. I haven't bought myself a new one. The one I don't use and I could have probably done without now. I love the, the um, blush that came with this one, the, my dream collection palette, which isn't different than the nude. It's beautiful. It's just, um, it's just colors that I don't normally wear. So I could have probably done without that one. Yeah. I have that one. Do you, I do broke you it? I use it. Um, I use it. I've, I filmed a few videos with it, actually. I did a real smoky eye because there's that duochrome color that looks really cool. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's kind of a funny video in the beginning. But anyway, <laughs> it, yeah, it's really pretty. But I live in a pretty small town. And with if I go out kind of looking with those dark colors, I, I feel like I'm asking for a lot of looks. So I really use it to more play here with everybody. And I don't generally wear those dark colors out, but I do love them. I, I think I didn't get the other one that you, that you showed with that kind of pinky, the purpley one. Yeah. The retro. I didn't because it's a lot of pink. It's a lot of pink. Yeah. Yeah. So I would have been happier if it had been maybe a little bit of mix. Yeah, with some other, where this one has you could wear this to the office you could wear this out for dinner you yeah. literally can now what sure. color i'm going to use stone from this palette same palette you have which color did you use in that crease mesh mesh okay yeah which one did you use you use stone I stone okay so you're going you're um you really go cool say eh? i really do yeah and especially i feel like i need to or else i just don't quite look yeah I, I don't do well in warms even Thank you. when I try to like have a warm shirt and try to really pull a look together it still just doesn't and warm lipsticks do not look good on me at all I, they don't on me either at all I'm a neutral or a cool as well I think sometimes I can do a warm but um and for anybody watching 
I, I don't know if you noticed me building this color up. Um, I love that about eyeshadows. There are shadows that are so beautiful, but they're so pigmented that as soon as you dip your color into the powder, into the shadow, um, and you put it on there, it's powerful. And I like that, but not always, because I want to be able to... Whoop, it just threw my brush. I want to be able to build the product up and have control versus getting it on my lid and then having to blend it out. ABH has really beautiful palettes, but they're so pigmented that sometimes you can make a make a mistake quite easily. Do you find yeah, that as well? I do. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to build on this. Um, what are you doing? Like a standard kind of crease? Should I do more of a smoky? Well, yeah, do a smoke if you want. I'm doing a little bit more of a crease because I'm finding that as I age, my lids are starting to be, I don't have hooded eyes clearly, but I do have starting to get more droopy eyes. And I've really been practicing these techniques that I've learned that to put that darker color right at the, the underbelly, if you will, of that droop. So right through here, and it just helps it pull back and pull tighter looking. Yeah. So it doesn't look, and then leaving my lid, the whole lid, outer corner to inner corner, as light as possible. It just pulls that look of a droop back. It doesn't go back to my 20 year old eyes, but yeah. it definitely. You have quite a big face in there. That's really nice. It's yeah. Becoming smaller, but you can see just the difference between this eye, how that doesn't look as droopy as this eye where we haven't done that yet. So mm -hmm. just that adding that darkness on that, the belly, I call it of the droop. The belly. Let's pull it back a little bit. So yeah. that's, that's been my go-to lately. So mine is definitely starting to droop more. So I always have to, like, I'm not worried about having a lot of lightness here left. I want to pull that up higher. And I even kind of flick it out a little bit. I love that. To make sure that I can see, like when I'm looking straight at you, that you can still see that shadow. Because if I try to put it in here where I used to put it, it's it's gone. <laughs> it's like it's not existent anymore. So, so all right. I'm gonna do that. I'm going to pull this out a little bit with my little fluffy brush. I'm going to take this darker color. I might, because you're doing one look, maybe I'll just do an, a different look. So I'm going to take a stiffer brush. These are all refer brushes, by the way, they were so kind to send me some. So this is a 28 brush and I'm going to dip into tender this one right here nice one tap it off and i think i might go on the outer corner and on the inner and i'll do a little halo eye i like it i'm also finding that i used to be able to stop that but you see how when i opened it up i lost it so i have to drag even that part up a bit higher that is just life in our 50s, isn't it? I know. It's... I'm going gonna... <laughs> to grab a small little, um, small little tight pencil type brush and go into silhouette. And then I'll meet you in that eye socket area. Silhouette. Oh, that's a nice color. That's like a, a rich brown, eh? Like a, almost a plummy brown. And I like to, yeah, it's a, it's a darker brown. I'm more on the cool side, I would say. And then I like to just twist that pencil right in the eye socket so that I get my placement pretty close and then I go back and blend it out. How are you guys liking this for, for I can't speak. How are you liking the format? <laughs> Anybody have suggestions? Cause we're so new at this. If you have any suggestions, like if you think the sound should be better, if you think the quality is okay, or um if you want to kind of i like taking votes of topics too so if you guys want to let us know what you'd want to talk about next in a video um we can specifically do something like that right jody we can i would love that yeah absolutely. really target what you guys want to see we're just kind of playing right now it's great uh stein says it's great no problem for her perfect good yeah what do you guys want to know more of see more of see less of we would love to help you with whatever it is and if you just want to put on your ipad or your phone while you're getting ready and get ready with us that's my favorite i, love I do that. that all the time yeah. especially when i'm uh, when i'm cooking not that i cook very often i hate cooking <laughs> but I if i we were meant to be friends <laughs> i hate it 
But if I have something that I have to do, even when I take the dogs for a walk, I'll just put my, I'll just kind of put my phone in a strap and, or in my pocket and I have my earbud going. Just like here in my I ear. love the look that you're putting together. Yeah, this is kind of that halo eye. And it, what it will do is kind of create, you'll see when I add the lightness here and the shimmer, it will create more of a round look. So oftentimes we're going for kind of that cat eye look or this kind of wide this way. And this, in this kind of technique, it's going to become a bit more rounded. And sh so by gonna, shadowing the corners of it. Yeah, it's going to change the shape of the eye a little bit that way. So I'm going to pull that up into that area. And I always start that first dot of, like if I dip into the color and I put it on my eye, I put it on my eye where I want it to be the darkest. If you mess up, it's okay because you can blend that out. But if I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't start it up here first because I don't want it to be the darkest up here. So right. I hold in that nook, in that corner, and then kind of drag it up like this. Do you find that you do that with your blush as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, for sure. since I worked for Mary Kay Cosmetics in my college years to help kind of help get through college. And that was one of the first things that I remember her saying is put your brush where when you put the product on, put it where you want the most color deposits because that's where the most is going to come out of. And it's so yeah. funny that you just I, I don't really think about that when it comes to my eyeshadow. So I'm so glad you just said that. Yeah. Makes total and sense. that's why you'll see a lot of makeup artists say, especially with a cream blush or something that's powerful. Like I brought out this blush here today these house lab blushes are very pigmented they're very powerful so if i just went like this and right onto my cheek it could be dangerous um beautiful color and i find that these really last so oftentimes i'll put my brush on there and i'll just tap it out on my hand a little bit just to make sure that it's just kind of work it into the brush a little bit too so it's not that color is not stuck on that one spot and then put on that, like, then you kind of got that bullseye dot. Just little, little tricks like that. Um, Stein says, talked about Inglot Duo. Oh, I did see a video with one that talked about Inglot Dual Line Mix and Medium. It had a, I'm going to put this right on there for us for both to see. Game changer for me because I have very hooded eyes, I swear. Yes. Yeah. Do you know which one she's talking about, Jody? I don't think so. So it's like, um, I have, oh, is this it? Oh, is this it? Stein? I think that's it, eh? So it's like a mixing medium and you can mix it with your eyeshadows and it changes it into a, um, into like a, an eyeliner, but you can also mix this in. Am I showing the front? It's so hard to see. Yeah. There we go. You can also mix this in, say your paint pot got really dry or you have a, a gel liner that got really dry. You can add a little bit in. Yes, sign. It's not funny. I had that. Huh. Um, <laughs> if you wanted to mix that in with your uh, gel liners, if they dried out, you could you could mix that in and it will bring them alive again. Nice. And it doesn't it doesn't smell or have any alcohol. Does it have any alcohol smell to it or anything like that? Nope. No? Oh, good. I'll have to try no, that. No smell. It's very liquidy. I don't know what the ingredients are, honestly. That's awesome. I will I definitely guess. grab that. Um, no, doesn't say. No? Okay. No. I, I bought that when I was in New York years ago. I hope it's still good. I don't think it would not be. Do you throw your eyeshadows out when when you think like, oh, I've had this for a couple of years? I, no, I don't. However, last year I did a video on my eyeshadow drawer and thought, okay, it's time to get rid of some of these. <clears throat> so which ones will stay? <coughs> you mean, which ones will go? And it's probably time to do another one of those cleaning out videos. I used to work for Mac years ago. I have like, I have old packaging. I think I did just finally throw them out. And the problem is, is I've, I've filmed a few videos using those and they don't even have them anymore. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I feel so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to keep up with all of them for sure. I do have one that I don't think I'll ever get rid of. And I just talked about this one the other day. 
It's one of Natasha Denona's very first palettes. It's embarrassing to even admit how much I paid for it. It was north of two hundred dollars for like ten colors. Oh, it's have a white palette. It's the it's in my Thank You Tati collection. You probably have it. It's got the blue and the purple and the green in it. It's gorgeous. Oh my gosh! If you have it, I'm gonna crack up laughing. Oh my gosh! That is it. <laughs> That's it. This That's is it. it. No, actually, no. Oh, oh you got the purple one. one. I've got the, it's a skinny, narrow one. There's only like 10 colors to it. Oh, you don't even want to know how much this was. I don't, because if I, my small one was 200, then yeah, that was, oh gosh. But do you get rid of that? I can't. I and, but whoever is going to use this much eyeshadow? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't need this. Do I need this? No. But I hear the Sephora sales coming up again soon, eh? So uh, it's kind of like that, you know, that game that people play, like if you were to, if you could only have a milkshake, there's one spot that you will go to get a milkshake, right? Like, you know, if I want a good milkshake, I go to whatever that is for you. Or if I want really good fries, I go to this restaurant. You don't go to one restaurant to get really good everything. And that's kind of how I feel about my cosmetics. When I want a really good eyeshadow, there's several out there. And of course we can't test everything. I, this, her shadows to me are some of the best. So yeah. You just, you know, when you want a good eyeshadow palette, I just love Natasha Denona's palette. I also, like, do you like art as well? Yes. Art. Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. So I love art. I'm not good at it necessarily, and I'm not well practiced at it, but there's something very exciting and inspiring, even though I could have these colors in other palettes, there's something very, like... You know, I just get motivated and I get excited and I, it just brings me so much joy when I open something like this and I use it and I, I can't explain it. I guess it's like, I would say to my husband, at least it's not cars. Like his, his excitement is cars. Okay. My, this costs a lot less money than the cars. So it's just one of those things that, and it's not for show because nobody you know, nobody knows what I own in my makeup collection, but this is my happy place. This is where I, it's like my meditation. It's, it's my art therapy and yes. it's, it's the really little things. Good. Yes, absolutely. I am there with you. I was at a, I was in a smaller town a couple of weeks ago. You just made, reminded me of this and there was a husband there who's friends with my husband. And so he knows what I do. And he's always very kind and asking him and his wife, how's the channel? How are things going? And he said to me, and I, I, I'll ask you what you think of this, because I'm still pondering on it. He said, Jody, I wonder if maybe you sh your audience would be interested in a video of how people wear their makeup in a big city versus a small town. And now I had come from a big city for this small town event. So I clearly took that to mean okay, there's a big difference in the way I just showed up with my makeup on versus <laughs> everyone else here. So um, I'm going to assume he had the best intentions. I know him. I know he had good intentions, kind thoughts. But I thought, my gosh, is there that big of a difference? Or is it just what you feel like wearing that day? You know? Well, I've lived in both. So right. I... I grew up in a small town in like on a dirt road by a farm and I live in a small town now in, in um, Canada. Which one do I want to do? I'm just going to, by the way, I just want to stop that for a second. I put a little bit of um, Mac 24 hour eye primer. It's called 24 hour extend eye base. And I put that on the light area right here. That's where I'm going to put the shimmer. Because nice. I found that shimmer can tend to fall out a little bit onto my cheeks as I blink, especially now that I'm older. So it just stops it from moving. I'm Which curious one? what you think of um, Sheen and I have to hold it out because I'm right on my glass on and Maya. These two colors right here. So this is Sheen, that one, and here's yeah. Maya. And these are what they call the wet look. And you just put it on and it's, even though it's sheen, it adds a little bit of, it looks wet. So I'm wondering if that will, and I applied that to my lids and the corner of my eyes, that might help set it, you know, your, your shimmer a little bit. That and some setting spray on a brush, of course. Yeah. Um, are those are the ones. So sheen and Maya, oh, Maya looks so pretty. Yeah. Those are the wet. So it's a new formula for her, this palette. Well, which one should I use? Should I use one of them that I just 
because I am going to, I'm going to top it with a sparkle, uh, like a sparkle for sure. Let me do sheen first. How's that? Yeah. Gosh, that shows up really pretty on your skin. So this, this is pretty. Isn't it nice? It really does look like it's got a wet look, doesn't it? Yeah. But it looks like your skin just glowy. Yeah. It doesn't look chunky or sparkly or glittery. No. And I'm going to pull some of that dark back over the edges now. I'm actually going to really play with this and build that. Um, that's pretty. So yeah. back onto your, uh, I, I love that. I think that looks really, really elegant. It's a very elegant look. Yeah. It's really pretty. pretty. Um, where this one muse, that's going to be much more, you know, I have to add that. Um, small town. So when I used to live in New York, I could wear whatever I wanted. I did wear whatever I wanted. And I understood when I got there that nobody was looking at me. Like nobody cares. It's right. so different when you're in a small town, in a small town, um, it, it, it's not that people are judgy at all, but you definitely will get looked at if you look different. So like I, I'm, I'm such a country girl. Um, I always played with my makeup and I always wore, my mom would say I looked like I had Christmas tree ornaments on my ears. Like I always had these big gigantic earrings on. And that really didn't even fit in so much with the small town, I guess. Um, not so much where that? I am. Where I didn't sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Not so much where I am now. I'm I'm kind of a suburb of a bigger city. But even in our city, we have a very a political town. We're in a, a political city, so it's a lot. It's very conservative, and there's not a lot of. Um, yeah, it's not like considered high fashion here, if that makes sense. But in New York or where I don't know where you are, I guess out in L.A., it would be like anything goes. And there's a certain amount of freedom that goes with that because you just know that nobody's looking at you anyway. And you can just be you and do whatever makes you happy. And you can hear, too. It just you get a lot more attention. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, I'm outside of Seattle now. And it's sort of the same. And when I was in L.A. and in Orange County, yeah, very much you could go as bold, as bright, as you know, dark with your makeup as you wanted. Um, and in that smaller town, it was just so, I, I loved it. And I thought, gosh, there probably is, you know, different techniques of makeup, or maybe it's the same look, but it's a lighter hand with that look, just so that it's not so stand out, or it may not just, it may be, be not as attractive in some areas that people may not like that look as much, or that's again, I, that's what I love about makeup is there's no rules and you can change whatever you want to do from one day to the next. And yeah. Tomorrow. And you know, it's nobody's business, right? So true. Um, it's nobody's business and it really is. It has to be what you're comfortable wearing. I would say that. Um, so just going back to this, I actually just took a different brush and I put this color, which is tender back over top and patted it in over top of my silhouette. Nice. So just kind of blending that in a little bit more. Um, am I missing, um, you need you need to move to Toronto. Oh, yeah, Toronto's a little bit different. You, you definitely, uh, Chacord Elegant. Uh, I, I understood your French, Kathy. It's elegant, Kathy said. Oh. I'll and I have to say, Julie, I have got great subscribers across the, the world. They're so, amazing they show up they comment they give good feedback some of the the most um engaged or my subscribers from canada i have to thank you and everyone in canada because you guys are so supportive and kind and encouraging and it's been so delightful to just Yay. i got the chills yeah it was really and i say that all the time to many of them and, and again i have great subscribers across all parts of the country and the world uh, but the, the Canadian ones really do an amazing job of just being so kind and very supportive. So thank you to everyone in Canada. I, I just, and even like, look at Stein from Denmark. I don't you find that the coolest thing. And I have another on TikTok. I have, um, uh, nurse Nikki is her name and she's in Australia. 
And you really get to know, there's another girl, she's a young, young little girl, little girl, she's in her 20s, she's not little. Uh, Tony, she's so supportive and she's in, she always tells me where she's from and I, I need to write these things down. I think she's, she's in the UK somewhere, I can't really remember. And uh, I, I love, I know social media gets a bad reputation, but when you use it for good, it's really good. Yeah. It really That's connects totally us great. with the people. And I don't know about you, but I'm actually really lucky. I haven't gotten um, haters or anything like that. And if I do, I maybe have gotten some comments, but I just show them love and I don't really put much into it. Um, but I really kind of asked for the universe to bring like-minded people together and and it really has happened. There's, we've got like-minded people. Everybody just wants to be joyful, you know? And supportive and kind. And I mean, look, we're all navigating this aging thing together. And thank goodness we're, we're able to, to have aging or else the alternative is certainly not. Right? So I, that's one of the things that I think is social media has been so helpful is just providing a, a vehicle where we can listen to other women going through similar changes and, you know, what our bodies do, what our hair does, what our skin does as we age and find comfort in that instead of distraught and despair, yeah. which there are days where you're like, gosh, could I please just, you know, I'd give anything to have some of that collagen or that puffy face back or whatever it is, but that those days are gone. And it's great to embrace it with other people that are going through the same thing and want to embrace it with you and say, you know what, this is, this is beautiful. Whatever 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, a hundred looks like. Love it. And you know, um, I find that I just sprayed a little bit of uh, setting spray, by the way, just cause that I, I don't want that glitter or that shimmer to move. Um, I find, so when I, when I got really started getting back on YouTube again, cause I was, I did have a, my own studio in my house where I was taking clients and I had to stop that. But one of the things that really helped me out so much was when I was seeing women of different sizes trying on clothes and it helped me so much. Like it, it, people just got on with normal bodies and they weren't model-esque and they weren't skinny. They didn't have the tightest skin. They didn't have this perfect hourglass tight, you know, belly, which I've never, ever had in my life. Um, and I just thought, oh, this is so nice. And as helpful as they were for me, I wanted to be that helpful to somebody else. And that's why I refuse to use filters. And I, I just, I, that would mean that I'm ashamed of what I look like. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. I do Botox. I do that stuff, but I also share it because I don't want anyone else comparing themselves to me and going, well, why, you know, I'm 52. Why doesn't my skin look like that? Well, that's not fair. I'm going to tell you, no, I, I've had dysport or Botox since I was 30 years old in my, in my forehead. So that's don't compare yourself because that's not fair, <laughs> you know, right. Right. like, and, and I think that that's, I don't ever want anyone to think that they need to do that, but I also don't want you to think that I'm aging better because of, I'm just mad. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, yeah. I think sharing, yeah. caring, like have all the information before. I think it's important. I don't know. Maybe I overshare, but. No, I think that, I think that's so important, especially when we get on a platform and, and show how products work, they're going to definitely work different. If you've had certain procedures or certain, you know, lasers or you exfoliate different, then of course things are going to look different. So I think that's all part of like, I love what you just said about here's all the knowledge. Now you decide what's best for you. Yeah. And don't I judge. Like, I don't, I would never judge somebody for not doing it. In fact, I, I really envy that because I think there's a, a huge amount of freedom of just loving yourself as you age. And, you know, I've got to do that with my body. There's nothing I can do with my body. And I am telling you, it is just getting saggier and wrinklier. <laughs> I, I've never looked after my body. Like I have my face and the difference is insane. Like it's crazy. The skin on my, on my arms, for an example. Um, but I, like, I look at people like Jennifer Lopez, for an example, and I don't claim to know what she's done, but she definitely has done something. She's definitely done microneedling or, you know, I'm not saying she's had a facelift or anything, but there's people who actually look at her and they're sad from, they're sad for themselves that they're not, they, they're not aging 
like her. Does that make sense? Oh, and I don't, yeah. and I don't think that's fair. I, I, I don't. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and you know, you, there's so much, and I'm not, I'm not saying anybody's using filters, but there's a lot of filters being used. I mean, I don't use, I don't even know how to use a filter in a video. So, I mean, on TikTok and stuff, cause you can use there, but like on a video for YouTube, I do all my own editing. I don't, I don't filter or edit the, the look of my skin. I'm not yeah. that sophisticated. I don't even know if you can do that in the program that I, I use, but there's a lot of that that happens. And I understand that's the character that they are portraying because that's who they have to be. But in yeah. everyday life, I think that yeah, I'm with you. That's why I love what your channel stands for. I love what I'm doing so that it just, it just looks like this is what real looks like. Now my thumbnails, and I've said this before, my thumbnails, yes, that's a softer picture. That's a, a filtered picture. If it's a thumbnail on YouTube, when you go into the video, you see exactly me. And yeah, it is because it's I think about that as a as a as an album cover or when you go to Netflix and you see the movies across the top that you're deciding which movie to watch. The, the whole thing is filtered. So it'd be really difficult to have a photo on a thumbnail that's on YouTube that isn't filtered. Now, I don't hide my wrinkles. You can go to those and see that the wrinkles are still right there as much you can see them now. But but in that case, yes, it's a it's a poster. It's a it's a yeah, I think of it as an album cover is what I think. That shows my age right there, right? Album cover instead of like. Yeah. A <laughs> well, I can tell you, like, because I've worked in in professional settings. I've worked in uh, as a makeup artist and hairstylist for um, for photos and film and everything. And and there is a reason why there's a lot of that that's photoshopped, and that that is it's just like. I have a piece of art on my wall, for an example. Well, if there was a spot on that on that picture, my I would only go to the spot. I would wonder what the heck is that spot doing there. So, especially in advertisements, it, it I it I I don't I don't like. Let, let, how do I back that up? Okay, so if you're advertising a mascara and then you're photoshopping or you're putting false lashes on, which it always was in the past. I, they're getting better with that now, but if they're if they're advertising a mascara and and it's all fake, well, that's false advertising. But if you're if you're looking at a magazine and there's an advertisement for like a design for designer clothes, or you just want to see a pretty picture, it has to be photoshopped. It has to look perfect because for the viewer, the viewer, it, it's not going to be pleasing to the eye because they're not going to know where to look. So there is a certain element that it, it it's a must. Because I, I look at it as a piece of art, right? Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Um, but when you're, when I'm a, uh, when I'm a 52, almost 52 year old person, I don't want to. I'm not going to say, look at this foundation. This looks so good, but yet my, I have a filtered face because it's just not. It's a flat out lie. It's just yeah. a flat out lie. Yeah, Kathy, I'm listen. So I'm going to put this up for you. It's French and Mejem. What does écrire mean en français pour sachez Since France, aussi here. Um, oh, me, me. But, but I like écrire. Wait, I'm trying, Kathy. I so badly want to do this. I'm trying to. What does écrire in French? I was going to copy and paste it in Google Translate, but it won't even let me copy it. I was in gonna... English. I need Google Translate because I don't want to ignore you because I, I'm get like, I can get the, I know you're in France. Depuis since, since the France aussi, since I've been in France, I think is what you're saying. Um, hang on to write. Write in French. I think you're saying something about writing in French. Because you're in France. Am I right, Kathy? <laughs> Kathy, we love that you're watching from France. Yeah, and I, and I, and I should know French because I'm Canadian. But, uh, okay. I just, yeah, I should, can I copy and paste that into? No, because every time I go to the comment, it will make me hide it. Writing, écrit, who knows French? Key, do you know French? Sesh. Matter. I hope it doesn't matter. Maybe she's saying, I hope, I hope it's 
poor, poor is for key cow. We're just having a little French lesson on our I makeup. Love it. I love it. Know that she well, hello to France. Can I just would love to go to France. L. Oh, I'm spelling it wrong. Just a second. How about my thumbs? What, what a day person. Um, qui a le is, is, I got it right, Kathy. You're sorry you're writing in French, but you're in France. What did I get? It? <laughs> I, I'm kind of, I can read French a little bit better than, like, if you were to say that, I wouldn't be able to catch it. But because I, mais is but, j'aime is, uh, j'aime, like, j'aime, j'aime, isn't that I like? Francais, I know. Kathy says, come, come to France. We'll both, Jody, we'll both go. Yes. We're just going to stay at Kathy's place. <laughs> we'll let Kathy do our makeup. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, the style. I would have to change all my clothes to come to France because they're so stylish there. Okay. I really didn't have fallout, guys. I have a little bit of sparkle right there. So that's good. Yeah, this found it, or this, that, um, gosh, no, no, it doesn't fall out at all. Even those dark, that dark brown that you used, it didn't fall out at all either, no. did it? No. No. Nope. I mean, I was really gentle with it, but I'm going to actually, um, now oh, Jackie wants to come to France. Uh, okay. So that was really subtle and you know, I got to go for a little bit of sparkle. So I am going to add a little bit more and maybe I'll just add onto my flat brush some, some, mm, yeah, I'm going to add some setting spray. And I'm going to go into Muse, and that's this high shine one right there. Love that. What have you been doing? I have just added some mascara, which I love this Thrive. It is a tubing mascara, so for anybody that doesn't love tubing mascara, but um, I am, if I could, I said this on an Instagram post, if you could go to a deserted island and you could only take one beauty product, what would it be? And I gave choices. I shouldn't have narrowed it down, but I said lipstick or mascara because I wanted to see. And it was almost 50-50. And for me, it would definitely be mascara. I'm just a mascara hoarder, I think. I won't even say snob because I like mascara. I love e.l.f. I love um, that e.l.f. lash and roll is a really good one. I love Voluminous by L'Oreal. Love a lot of mascaras at all different price points. But Somebody And I usually wear three coats of mascara. I'll do two coats. And then my third coat was always waterproof to make sure I don't get any transfer or smudging underneath my eyes. Since I've discovered, and I was late to the game on Thrive. Thrive Cosmetics has been, you know, they've touted this mascara for years and years. And I just, you have to order it through Thrive, which to me, I just wanted to go get it. And I had to order it. Yeah. So I think that's why I just didn't do it. When I tell you that it, I use two coats, I don't use a waterproof anymore. There's absolutely no smudging, no transferring. Now I do use a little bit of setting powder underneath my eyes. So that does help keep this area from being too moist or emollient, which is part of why you get that dark shadow from your mascara. And, but that was how I've always done it. And I still needed a waterproof with this. I don't need that third coat of waterproof mascara and it's just a beautiful mascara. Now, I wash my face with coconut oil. I don't use a cleanser and I just use a little bit of and rub right on my lashes and it comes right off at night. So it's not even like it leaves big raccoon eyes. It doesn't leave a big smudgy mess. So mm -hmm. I hate to even say it's a tubing mascara because it doesn't come off like a tubing mascara comes off. You know, those come off kind of almost like in little spaghetti pieces. Yeah. Like your lashes are falling out. Yes. This one does not. Now I loved your stream on Monday with Maury who said she does not use this and good cause she didn't like the way it felt and she felt like it was drying. So it's just such a good reminder to try so many different things. Cause you never know what's going to work for you. Um, yeah. but I, for me, this is a Holy grail mascara for me, a Holy grail mascara. And I have no, I have no ends with thrive. So please know this is not sponsored. I just love it. And if you are looking for a good mascara, that's one I would suggest. I have to try that at one point I went to do it. And then because it was, it's not at the time, I don't think they had a Canadian site. And by the time I paid shipping uh -huh. and in my Canadian dollars, it was quite expensive. Yeah. Um, but I should try it. I know I should try it. Cause I love tubing mascaras. I used to really use hourglass all the time. It was the, um, Oh, I think I might've just thrown it out cause it was so old. And what are you using now? 
This is Fan Fest by Benefit. And it is not as easy to get off as a tubing mascara. That's the only thing I don't like about it, but boy, do I ever like it. It doesn't budge. It almost feels like a waterproof, but it's not a waterproof. Really? Um, no smudging or transferring or anything? No, not on me. No. And I've recommended it to a few people and they really like it. And I was so scared. So this one lady, she asked me um, what I was using and I, I said, I hope you like it. <laughs> uh, and then after my Facebook got hacked, she wrote and said, well, I have good news. I really like it. She was trying to make me <laughs> feel better. Oh, good. So, yeah. So she said she really did like it. Well, and a lot of people must love that because there was a, a report out, I think just yesterday or today that said that um, Louis Vuitton, uh, Moe Hennessy, who's the conglomerate company, you know, that owns a lot of cosmetic companies, LVMH, they own Benefit. And one of their best selling brands in Q3 of all the brands that they have, and, the, and they've got Fenty Beauty, they've got Gucci, they've got Dior and um, uh, KBD. They're one of their best selling products of all the conglomerate was that fanfare or that fan is it fan fest or fan, fan fair? fest? Yeah, fest yeah. mascara by benefit was really a big seller for them last quarter. So a lot of people love it. I'll have to give it a try. I really do like it. I really do like it. And I it matters to me if it's easy to get off because I don't want to be rubbing my eyes. Yes. So I'm surprised I've stuck with it this long, but all I have to do is leave my makeup remover on and I just leave it on a little bit longer and I kind of just massage it a little bit slower and it, it will come off no problem, but it's not as easy as some of my other mascaras for sure. Yeah. Now, what but did you put under your eyes? Did you use a, an eyeshadow from the palette or did you use yeah. a liner? Yeah, I generally don't use an eyeliner and I don't know why. I just really like the soft look that an eyeshadow gives. But um, I think if I wanted to wanted it to really, really last, maybe I would layer and do a pencil and then but I still always like a smudgy look. Yeah. I just I just like a smudgy look. What concealer did you use? It looks beautiful. Um, the concealer I went with was the House Labs. I used the House Labs, right. I did ask you that already. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the House Labs. And what color do you have? I have 13. Okay. I have 13 light neutral. And I have 12. And I already did use a little bit of Bobbi Brown Bisque corrector. I did use that a little bit, but I knew I wanted to, just because I was doing a darker eye, I wanted to make sure that... Um, I didn't have any fallout before I finished it up. So let me see what brush. All of my Angie hot and flashy brushes are dirty. I've got a, we need assistance. Yeah. <laughs> the worst part is, um, oh, Kathy likes the uh, Edal from, uh, whoops. Oh, Lash Clash. You like the Lash Clash? Lash Clash from YSL. I do too. I'll actually sometimes put, I'll show you. I'll put the Lash Clash on top of this one. That's the YSL. Yeah. Really, really pretty. I love that I, one. You like that one too? Mm -hmm. And I love the um, idol from uh, Man Man Lancome. Man That's the one she said, yeah. yeah. I love that one too. I just got some transfer from that one. So when I did seal that with a waterproof, it was flawless all day. But I, I And it may just have been because of the uh, concealer that I was using underneath it, but I did get a little transfer unless I sealed it. But yeah, I've got that one's a favorite. They're, they have a liquid eyeliner that the uh, Lancome has an idle liquid eyeliner that's really good if you prefer a liquid eyeliner with a felt tip. It's very, very precise. Look at that gigantic zit that's happening right there. I'm getting more acne now than I ever did in high school. <laughs> Actually, that really covered well. So I just used um, Too Faced Born This Way concealer. Love that, for that one. one. It's a nice full coverage. Yeah. And that knocked that right out. Perfect. Oh. Gone. I'm talking a lot. You're much faster. Did you put lipstick on? I'm doing it right now while we're talking. Okay, what'd you do? I used the um, Peachy Nude. Uh, this one is by Chanel. Peachy Nude. Mm. Right down. And then I'm going to my go-to, which is, I love that combination. Let me just, that peachy nude with Wedding Day by Lawless. Oh, I, favorite nudie go-to. Because it's not matte, it's but it's not a high shine. It's just a nice 
the shine isn't coming through in the video, but it's a nice little satin type. Like a satin? Yeah. Very pretty. Um, Kathy also, yeah, well, let me see. Kathy, you have the same taste as me, Kathy. I write in French that you know that I watch you from France. Oh, that's why. Okay. Got you. Okay. okay. I kind of got it. I'm so proud. No, you of did so good. You did way better than I did. I didn't even attempt that. So good for you. And then I'm okay. going to put a little bit of Mist and Fix by Makeup Forever all over as a setting spray. And then I'll go back with a really light dusting of powder just in my T-zone where I tend to get a little bit oily. But setting spray first and then powder for me. And then powder. Yeah. And which uh, which powder are you using? Um, I'm going to still use this uh, Givenchy. The Givenchy. I have, I bought a little mini of that. What color did you buy? You know, it's so funny. I was telling the story the other day. I went in and I use this every day. And I went into Sephora. I have color um, three, file rose. And yeah, I think I just got the wrong one. I went in the other day and the lady at Sephora was so sweet. She said, um, can I just show you this beautiful powder that we have? And it'll make your skin look absolutely flawless. And I said, oh, what is that? So we walk over to this powder. And she's like, a little bit will really make your skin look really beautiful. And I said, oh, well, what do you think my skin needs? And she goes, well, it just needs a little bit of powder. And I said, oh. I said, could you put it on my hand first? Because I had just applied this not an hour before. No so, way. Yes. And I'm thinking, I'm, <laughs> and I know she has to do a job. And I understand it's commission sales. So I'm trying to just be, you know. But Where like, though? I don't need two layers of powder. So could you just put it on my hand? So she puts it on my hand. She goes, see, don't you think how beautiful that is? Wouldn't that look so nice if we were just do, you know, I'll just do some of your face. And I had to, la I started laughing. I said, ma'am, well, uh, thank you. I'm sure it would look beautiful. Had I not already applied this less than an hour ago. And she goes, What's oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. No. And I said, no, but it's gorgeous. And then she's very kind. And she said, oh, your skin is absolutely beautiful. And I'm thinking, that's not what you said Five seconds ago, you were trying to sell me some powder. But I was she, at a, was she at a department store? She was at Sephora. They're not on commission. You know, I did, I used to not think so, but I feel like I need to ask somebody if that's changed because as of the last emergence from COVID, I feel like it's just, I feel a little bit um, sold to when I go in there anymore. Maybe it's just my local area. If anybody out there works at Sephora, if you could just let me know, is it commissioned or not? But man, I worked hard on sale for a product I already had on my face that was going to change the look of my face. <laughs> well, I worked there and it wasn't commissioned when I was there. That was back in 2018. Well, that wasn't long ago. No. And I still have friends at work there. I don't think so. Maybe though, maybe because sometimes they have guests come in for the brand. Oh, oh, maybe, maybe she was from the brand. My, and they would have, uh, they definitely have to show that they're worth getting there. Yeah. Well, I, I, and I understand I used to be in sales, so I totally get it. So I wanted to let her do her thing. I just found it comical because I'm thinking, oh, I already have it on. I can't do two coats of powder. Funny. As nice as that powder is, no powder looks good on a mature face with two or three layers of powder. So no, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> What makes you get the three? Because what color do you have? Wait, I have the two. Maybe that's why I don't like it. Cause maybe it's just too light for me. Yeah, maybe this one's definitely got more of the pinks and the, yeah, maybe it's more pink. Mine's more Kathy. You like Givenchy the, um, oh, hold on. Hold on. I got the little mini because I wasn't sure. Yeah, that's a smart way to go. It's that one. Maybe it's just too light. I don't know. It, it just felt like it sat on my skin a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah. And do you apply a, a setting spray after your powder or before your powder? After. After. Yeah. But that's partly because I have a drier skin, though. Yeah. So I don't even know if I'm even, guys. I'm just talking and <laughs> it looks great. I'm, I'm not even paying fantastic. attention. I'm not paying attention. I feel like I didn't top up with a lipstick. Let me just see. Yeah, let's get some lipstick on. Yeah, don't let me rush you. I just was you were doing so much nice talk and I just was busy over here working. So don't I love I haven't I haven't um 
I haven't tried much of Givenchy at all. Uh, plus, I'm a pro, so I've, I've often gotten discounts. So, Mac, I get a discount because I had the pro discount before. I actually might use a bit of the same. I might use Rare Beauty Blush on my lips because my lipstick is over there. That's what I'm going to do. You put on your cheeks, Julie? Yeah, that's what's on my cheek. That's beautiful. And I feel a bit dewy. A little bit of that sparkle did pop down here, though. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. That's why I usually like to apply it with my finger. Yeah. And I didn't this time. It just reminded me I did not use a highlighter. So I'm going to go back to that palette since that did look nice on you. And I'm going to use the, um, I think I'll grab this one, the Mia, since I've got a pretty cool. Pretty. Okay. Yeah. We'll just add a little bit of highlight. So the Givenchy was always a little bit out of my price range too. I've, I'm just kind of stepping into trying newer things and a little, eyeshadow was something that I always I would like eh, when it would come out of my bank account, but there's so much fun. Like I, I, I just, that's my artistic outlet. Yeah, you the new, um, I don't well, I don't know if it, how new it is. The elf powder, the elf has a elf has a really good and their putty primer is wonderful, especially it's a, it's for your eyes and your face and your lips. And I use that elf putty primer. In fact, I should have grabbed it because I like to use it before I do my lipstick because it's a face primer, but they say you can use it on your eyes and your lips. And when I put it on my lips, it just gives them a, because it's a putty, it looks more hydrated. And then you put your lipstick on top of it. It's phenomenal. It's I bet it would, it would kind of fill the wrinkles. Yeah. I'm going to grab it. Right here. Am I missing you guys? You're superb. I was... I'm so glad, Kathy, that you came. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Yes, so the, the Halo Glow setting powder is a good one. I haven't tried that, and it's not at my local drugstore. Oh. So I think I may have to um, order that on Amazon. Yeah, I think. it's a little bit of, it's, it says it's glow. I don't, it doesn't look glowy at all to me. And I always laugh because they were so smart and many powders don't even do this, but they have this little twisty lid and a lot of them don't, the more expensive ones don't do that. So you get powder everywhere. And on this one, you just open it when you want the powder and close it when you don't, it seems like such a no brainer. Your eye makeup looks really pretty. Thank you. It was just a couple little swipes from Natasha Denona. And then I here's feel the putty primer. I was just talking about for the lips and it's a great, um, I do it with my nails, so I don't spread it over. And it's, it's great for your lips. Yeah. It's similar. I remember seeing that come out. It, they were comparing it to the Tatcha um, putty so primer. Bits. So yep. I'm noticing something, guys. When I look at my when I look at my eyes, I don't feel like I went up high enough here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to bring my eye shadow up a little bit higher, and we'll see what you guys think of the difference. Hold on. So I'm going to take a bit of stone like you did. And then I'm going to pull that up even higher. Yeah, and that's that. the thing. Like I keep going back to my old routine of doing my eyes. And then when I catch a glimpse of myself, my eyes look smaller than they used to. And I'm going too low. This is like all of us. It feels like all of a sudden my eyes have like <laughs> they've deflated. No, you're being way too hard on yourself. Your eyes are look stunningly beautiful. I do like that the where you've added that a little bit more though. Does that make a difference in lift though? It absolutely does. Yeah. The other side does it the other side looks a little heavier before you it do does. That. Yeah. So I don't like that. So your what color eyes do you have? Are they hazel? Or are they blue? They look beautiful, but through cameras you can never really tell. Blue. They're blue. Gorgeous. Yeah, blue. I, I would say sometimes gray ish a little bit they're beautiful thank you what are you green um hazel you're hazel yeah i tried yeah. green eye contacts remember when that was a thing when was that like in the 90s and they with those really dark green ones i wore those for about an hour and they hurt so bad i'm like oh my gosh i do not need to have green color eyes through this pain. yeah Some things will do pain for beauty you know like that really nice pair of high heel shoes that kill your feet uh, key's leaving us she's got to go thank you for being here key love you key and Stein just told me it makes a big difference. Yeah, I feel better about 
this placement. I think Kathy's heading off too. She said, uh, thank you. Love your channel. And Stein says, you both look beautiful. Oh, thanks, Stein. I'll post that up there. Thank you guys for being here with us. Um, oh, I feel so. Now I got to go out on a date. You do. Yeah. Go, go somewhere fancy or just the grocery store. Who cares? Yeah. Somewhere. What time is it there for you? It's 437 here. So it is 137 here on the West coast. Oh, you have all day ahead of you. Yeah. I got to go find something. That I'm going to do a little a couple more films today. Now that I've got Are all you? the makeup on. Yeah. For you. <laughs> Trey elegant. Ka Kathy says, uh, very elegant. Yay. Oh, Thank you so much, guys. We're going to head out here now. And I appreciate you being here. You guys head over to Jody's channel, follow her. We're both um, really trying to help support each other and, and grow our channel and find success here on YouTube. And Jody is over on Instagram as well. So am I, I have lost my Facebook. If you guys don't already know, I'm trying to get that back. So um, are you on Facebook? I am. Yep. It's just Jody Manis. Yep. Okay. Manus. I was saying Mans for some reason. Manus. Okay. That's, that makes sense. All right. My husband's family okay. is Norwegian. So it's yeah. Manus. Manus. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we will see you later. And any ideas, just leave them in the comments. Any ideas of what you'd like to see next? Um, let us know and we'll see you later. Bye you guys. Thank, Bye, you. Guys. thank you. Bye.